Spellkit 2.0 has released, and it is not a huge update. It's not a bad update, but it's not a big update either. There is one cool new feature, which I'm going to show off in this video. I added it to our project, and I think it'll be a... It, it, it's a very cool new feature and is a nice advanced addition to Svelkit. Uh, but otherwise, it was mostly just smaller fixes, some improvements and performance, and a couple different things here and there. Uh, I'll talk about the ones that I have personally been impacted. There's a list of changes, which are, of course, linked down below. Uh, there, Most of them really haven't impacted me, but I'll show you the ones that have. And, you know, fundamentally, this is mostly just in preparation for the migration to Svelte 5. Svelte 5 is not out yet. It is coming very soon. I, I will have a million videos on that when it does come out. Um, but for right now, I want to just show you guys the cool new stuff that came in Svelte Kit 2.0. If you guys enjoy this, make sure you like and subscribe. And otherwise, let's jump into it. So first things first, if you have a current Svelkit project and you have not done so already, make sure you go in and you run the command npx svelte migrate svelkit2. This will go ahead and make all the requisite changes within your code base, or at least most of them, so that it will not explode when you bring in the new package. It'll also go through and update everything you need. Uh, it works very well. I used it on the e-commerce site. Uh, had no real issues. So make sure you run that first. But after you've run that, I want to go over the sort of uh, the changes that I really noticed. And there aren't too many, but there are a few. Uh, the first one was that redirect and error are no longer thrown by you. Uh, so I'll pull up on screen what that looks like. But basically, uh, beforehand, when I was learning Svelkit and all this stuff, uh, whenever in your load functions or your form actions, you had to throw something, say uh, the user passed in some invalid data and you had to say, hey, stop that. Um, you would do throw error. Now you just put error. Uh, that tripped me up a couple times, but yeah, just no more throwing. That's an important one. Uh, another change that they made is that the path is required when you're setting cookies. Uh, this will not impact too many things, really mostly your authentication layer probably. Um, just make sure you go through and pass in name value, and now you need to pass in the path. The next major change is that top level promises are no longer awaited. This tricked me this tripped me up a couple times, but basically the whole point behind this is because uh Svelkit has introduced streaming. I don't think I have a video on that yet, but that probably deserves its own discussion. But uh the gist of it is you can pass in a promise to your load function. You can return that promise and then on your front end code you can hydrate the page instantly and then wait for that data to be streamed in. And beforehand, you had to do some weird nesting stuff, and it got kind of goofy. So they streamlined everything, and now it's just if you any time you return a promise, it will be streamed. And then if you want to just return the data normally and make it block, you have to make sure that you await everything. So they have a nice little example here on their website. Um, it shouldn't impact too many people's codes, but I did find myself tripped up by this once. So just make sure if you don't want it to be streamed that you await before you return. Another change that I ran into is that GoTo no longer allows you to pass in external URLs. Uh, you need to use window.location equals URL now to jump outside of the scope of your project. Um, GoTo now only works within your project. There are a few other changes in here. Um, I will link, like I said, I linked the whole thing down below. You can go through and see if there's anything that really impacts you. Um, personally, from my day-to-day -day work, those were the only ones that actually came up for me. Everything else is just kind of miscellaneous, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. And the last thing we're going to talk about today is going to be the cool new feature that they added, which is shallow routing. So the best way to explain shallow routing is to just show you what it is. So on this page, my products page, I obviously you need to have a page where you can go and get more detail on each product. So when I hit more information, what this will do is this will actually pop up a modal of the product. So it'll pop up the modal, give me some more information, allow me to add it to cart. Uh, bear with me here. I have not fully styled all this. This all looks really wrong right now. It's not correct, um, but we will get it fixed to work properly in the near future. Um, but for right now, what this will do is this will pop up a modal. Uh, and kind of expected behavior, but the thing that's different about it is look at the URL. When I was just on that page, it's slash products, but now I'm actually on the products page. And if I take this URL here and I open up a new tab and I copy it, I can paste this in and I will be on the full products page. So, or the full individual product page. So basically what this allows me to do is it allows me to pop up some UI elements and basically do modals and stuff like that. There's some other implementations and use cases and you can get creative with it, but the easiest example is a mobile. It allows me to change the URL and change basically the page without forcing a new navigation, basically. 
It's really cool. I'll show you the code for it in a moment here. It will allow me to pop up my first product here. And then when I click out, it will redirect me back to products. So it's a really nice way to kind of spice up your UI, clean it up so that, you know, when they're on the page, it'll feel really natural and clean for them to just be going in here. And we'll be like, oh, let's just hit more information. You pop this up. Uh, maybe we'll add in some view transitions or something so that this will like slide in or something, add some transitions here. Uh, you can make this really, really cool. There's some really awesome stuff you can do here, so definitely worth playing with. The actual implementation for this was way easier than I expected. I basically went to the new documentation page for it, which is of course linked down below, and I went ahead and I basically just copied over the code. This is not a tutorial for how to implement all of this stuff in any of the edge cases. Uh, if you guys would like to see that, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Uh, but basically what we're doing here is we're just saying, okay, if we have selected something which is going into page state and pulling out a selected variable, and that selected variable is being set within our product card. So on navigate, it just checks, okay, if we're on mobile, we return, just navigate as normal. Uh, if we are not on mobile here, then what we want to go ahead and do is we want to preload the other page. So we're going to just fire the load function of whatever the URL is that we pass to it. And then we want to go ahead and push to the state, um, push the URL, and then we want to go ahead and say that the selected is the result.data. So this selected right here is actually just the um, page data for my product page. So if we have something selected, we want to show the product page, which we're importing up at the top, we pass in the data and it works as you would expect. So really all we're doing is we're just socketing in the page as a modal. It's really cool, it's really clean, uh, like I said, there's a lot of potential here. Like I bet, um, let's let's add something in here. So we do in uh, fly or something like that. Um, we'll add fly from Svelte transition. Let's do that. Um, so I bet now if we go over to here and we hit more information, yeah, it'll nice, it'll like fade in. So it looks really cool. So we do that and then we'll do like out fade. There we go. So we hit that. So now we can add some fancy transitions here. So we fly it in, fade out. You know, a lot, there's a lot of potential here. Those are the big changes in Svelkit 2.0. It's not a huge release, like I said, a couple minor things, but really we're just getting prepped for Svelte 5. Svelte 5 is the big one uh, coming hopefully soon. I think, uh, you know, we're about halfway through January, probably within a couple months here, I'm hoping. And uh, when that does come out, you'll definitely hear about it here. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.